There are few illnesses that bring more emotion to one's heart than cancer. I watched some of my family members fight it, and I personally watched some of them die from it. As most of us probably know, doctors have been working meticulously for years on trying to find a better treatment for this disease, and they may have just found one. I want you to imagine cancer treatments that allow people to keep their hair and that do not hinder their daily lives. It may be a reality. So today I want to talk to you about mitochondria targeted anti-cancer agents. I just want to do a really brief survey by asking the members of the audience to raise their hands if they have ever had a family member that has been diagnosed with cancer and has died from it or has died from it, or if they know somebody that has had such experiences. Yeah, basically every hand in the, in the room is, is raised. It's completely relevant to our lives. What I'm talking about to you is not something that, 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 you'll just, that you should just forget. So in order to be more knowledgeable about mitochondria targeted anti-cancer agents, it's important to understand how these agents target cancer, how effective they are, and how promising this, this research is. So first, I want to talk about how these agents target cancer. But before I get into the, into the thick of my talk, I just want to give you a brief explanation as to what mitochondria actually are, because without this information, you're likely going to be very lost throughout the entire speech. So according to a September 2015 article from Biotech, week, which is just a scientific news publisher, mitochondria are organelles that are found within the cell, usually in large quantities, that are vital to energy production and respiration. Now the most important thing to remember out of that huge conglomeration of words is that mitochondria are vital to the cell's function and survival. Okay, so let's actually get into how these agents actually target cancer. So. The discovery of mitochondria targeted anti-cancer agents is changing the way doctors target cancer. And I want to explain to you at least three ways in which these agents are targeting cancer. The first one can be found in a September 2015 article, article from Nature Magazine, which is a highly respected scientific magazine. And it, and it says that these uh, agents represent a new way for tumor therapy due to the function and structure of mitochondria within cancer cells. The interesting thing about these agents is that instead of just targeting the actual cancer cell, we are talking about I'm no, sorry, not talking about, but we're actually targeting the actual part of the cell, the inside of it. It's actually much more surgical. The second way we can be found in the second article from Nature, which communicated that these agents accumulate within the mitochondria structure within the cancer cell. This is really how it targets the, uh, or how it kills the cancer cell. Take radiation, you're usually just blasting over the body with radiation, you're killing cells that way. Instead, this way, you're actually poisoning the cell. Think back to the definition I told you uh, about the mitochondria, how it's important to the cell's function and survival. These agents accumulate around uh, these, these organs and they are what actually poisons it. The third way can be found in a, 20, in a February 2015 pharmaceutical study, which is a medical journal, which reported that the agents have a higher selectivity for cancer. This was kind of hinted to my first point. When I say that mitochondria that these agents target mitochondria, it's, it's more selective than cancer cells. It's cancer cells actually don't behave like normal cells. Most of us can probably understand that. And that goes the same way for, their for, the, for the structure of mitochondria. Um, so now that I've discussed how these agents target cancer, let's see actually how effective they are. And the, the new anti-cancer agents, they work more efficiently and they uh, are far safer than the traditional methods. And I want to compare the effectiveness of these agents in two ways, particularly towards chemotherapy and radiation. So first, these agents are much more effective than chemotherapy. In April 2015, I'll go from the International Journal of Molecular Science, which is a scientific journal. These agents promote cell death far better than chemotherapy. And just to simply put it, they found something that works far better than chemotherapy, and it doesn't have any of the nasty side effects that chemotherapy has, such as hair loss or fatigue. In another February 2015 Biotech Week article, these agents selectively target tumors and overcome cell resistance to current cancer therapies. Believe it or not, cancer can actually be resistant to the therapies that are uh, being applied to it, and these agents are actually able to overcome these therapies and are able to um, provide far less of a fire for the patient. Secondly, these agents are, are far safer than radiation. As most of us could probably understand, radiation can actually damage the body. While it can kill cancer cells, it also can kill healthy tissue. And according to a 2015 article from the Radiation Research Society, which is a society that focuses, that focuses mainly on radiation research, it says that these agents protect against radiation to do cell death. For these agents to be effective, you don't have to use radiation, which is a really big plus in the fight against cancer. And I want to show you a couple of visualizations of the side effects of chemotherapy and radiation. On the left, you have radiation therapy. That person likely had throat cancer. You can see where it was, where it was burned. And that's Patrick Swayze on the right. Those are, that's just some before and after pictures of him uh, when he was going through chemotherapy. So now that the effectiveness has been uh, discussed, let's look at how promising this research is. 
this new research opens up many doors for future treatment uh, for future cancer treatments. To narrow this down, I just want to talk about two of these newly opened doors. The first door it points back to the September 2015 article from Nature, which says that investigations suggest that these agents are promising multifunctional treatments. A lot of what goes on in the body is down to a cellular level, and mitochondria is found within the cell. If we could just tweak this a little bit, we could actually be able to treat other, other illnesses. So it, could be, so it opens up a huge door, not only for cancer, but also other illnesses. The second door goes back to the 2015 article from the Radiation Research Society, which says that these agents are a promising strategy to increase uh, the efficiency of radiation. Radiation is effective at killing cancer, it truly is, but it also can damage certain parts of the body. And with these cells, not these cells, but these, uh, these agents targeting these cancer cells, you can actually knock back the, the cancer without having to use as much radiation and provide that one two punch to actually kill the radiation and knock it out. So, in conclusion, I just want to say that today I have told you all how these agents target cancer, how effective they are, how promising this research is. So the next time you hear of somebody being diagnosed with cancer, don't fret. Usually there's a light at the, t at the end of the tunnel, even with conventional methods of cancer treatment, especially if it's caught early. But thanks to the discovery of these new mitochondria-targeted anti-cancer agents, uh, really, darn. <laughs>